can't tell if I'm on yet. Hello, beautiful people. Oh, I know there's a few things I have to do before we start. Yes. Hi. How's everybody doing? It's been a minute. I mean, well, it depends. If you're in any of the membership spaces, you are so tired of seeing me because you see me every freaking day. I have been on sometimes seven, eight, nine, ten hours of Zoom a day. It's been intense uh, over here. Lots going on. Um, how are you beautiful people? This is the first time I've done a live stream out into Facebook and YouTube and Periscope through Twitter. I should be in all of those places. Looks like Jessica's saying hello from Facebook. Hello, Jessica. Um, report in. Let me know if you are experiencing this at YouTube or Twitter slash Periscope so I can make sure that it landed. Um, and I just always lately with our uh, online classes, our Zooms, our meetings, our masterminds, our curriculum experiences, I just like to start things off with take a breath, be fully present, give yourself that space that maybe you desperately need, create a buffer between you and all the things that are going on in the world and all the noise that's out there and all the fear and other people's energies and just Get clear on where you are versus where the rest of the world might be right now because it's it's a lot. It's a lot. Hello, Erin at YouTube. Hello, Sandy. So glad you could join live. Hello, Kirian. Good to see you. Hello, Periscope is reporting in as well. So we are all present and accounted for at the three spaces that this gets pushed live. If you are watching the replay anywhere other than Facebook, come over to my Facebook page where comments will remain open for the replay. Everywhere else, everywhere else the comments are closed off um, if you're watching in replay, but just put hashtag replay if you are watching the replay so that I can come back around and collect your questions and answer any of those that I can in the comments. Jessica says, I just signed up for your class yesterday. I think I was late signing up, but I'm most definitely getting the book. Get the book? The book? Wait, wait, wait. Hang on, I did an interview earlier this morning, so I had this handy. I usually don't. I have it on a bookcase, and then I go live, and I go, oh, crap, I don't have my book to show. There's my book, Self-Management for Actors. It is available on Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and everywhere else that you can get books uh, if they are willing to ship it to you right now. I understand that uh, so much of shipping is to be only essentials, but this is also on Kindle. Uh, and it is also an audiobook. If you go to SMFA4, the number four, SMFA, Self Management for Actors, if you go to SMFA4.com, you can get the audiobook. The audiobook is 17 and a half hours of me talking to you about mindset and the business of running your showbiz creative career. And yes, I've been told that the book could work for non actors to anybody who's an artist. Anybody who's a creative, anybody who's in a lifestyle of not knowing where the next buck is going to come from and being from job to job, going up for auditions, pitching yourself, am I going to get it, not knowing all of that. Uh, but self-management for actors has been the brand name for a good long time, so we stuck with that. But yes, it's self-management for all because it's all about self, like managing yourself, which y'all, I got to tell you right now, I am so happy for the work that we've been doing on issues of enoughness, because enoughness is all about knowing I'm going to be okay. Everything's going to be okay. I can go out and get rejected every day in a creative career and everything's still going to be okay. And right now, having that knowing, having that resting state of enoughness and that everything's going to be okay is really paying off. So don't, don't be frustrated with yourself if you're feeling a lot of tension and stress pushing at you and you're not quite so sure what to do with it, just know that your work is to maintain your resting state of enoughness, to not contribute to the panic that exists out there. And if you can get into a place of, I'm all right, right now I am safe, right this moment I'm okay, calm that amygdala down, you are doing far better than the news and the hype would want you to do. And I'm saying that because in the entertainment industry, we know that news is just the most practiced of all showbiz uh, at keeping you glued to the set 
and making sure that you feel like you cannot look away. Uh, that's all just showbiz, y'all. So it is part of us to build the muscle for managing ourselves, which means in my case, I need about 10 minutes a day of knowing what the news is going to be. I need to check in to find out what do I need to know about, what has changed, what do I need to um, have in terms of information so that I can operate fully in the world the way that I'm supposed to within the guidelines of what keeps us all safe. And then after that, I don't need to stay engaged to the constant machine of pelting the amygdala with fear and worry and stress and panic because none of that helps. None of that helps. Um, earlier today, I did an interview on the What Works Network, uh, which I love being a part of. If you are not uh, familiar with Tara McMullen, you might have known her by her previous name, Tara Gentili. She is a phenomenal human being that I've been following for a good long time, but I've only been working with her for the past couple of years. And she runs this thing called the What Works Network. There's the What Works podcast. Uh, definitely check it out. With tons of fantastic resources. And we were talking about being resourceful and being responsive to the things that are going on in the world and creating offerings based on what the world needs. And one of the things that I said then that I'm going to repeat, if you were with me like Jennifer was, thank you so much. I'm so glad that you were with us on that. It was so much fun. One of the things that I said was, I don't serve the world if I go get in a corner on that really comfy couch and pull that nice cozy blanket over my head and don't come up for air. Like even though I want to do that sometimes, if I choose to do that all the time, I'm not here in service of the world that I set out to help create by building self-management for actors, by working with actors and artists and freelancers and creatives and storytellers all over the world so that we can do more to get our message out into the world. And you know, storytellers are healers. You know that your work is important. And if you right now have been going, no, it actually feels like my work is kind of not worth anything right now. Like who, who am I to pursue this show business career at a time when people are dying and the front lines are all filled with people who are the actual heroes. Okay. Let's set, set something straight right here. In times of war, in times of strife, in times of struggle, in times of rescue, in some treacherous situations, the people who are on the front lines, every single one of them, when they come back from that experience of having been out on those front lines and getting bloodied and dealing with all the stress and the pain and just oh, so much, I have so much empathy for that, uh, so much that they're having to deal with, the first thing they do after they shed the clothes, shower off, and sit down in their home, their safe space, or even just the, the resting room because they can't even go home because of where they are to be dealing with this frontline experience is they pick up a remote and they turn on the television. They need the escape that is entertainment. They need the stories that make them feel like everything's going to be okay. They need the familiarity of those favorite sitcoms. They need the experience of connecting, which is what art does. Storytelling connects people. Storytelling makes people hear you talk about your life situation on stage, on camera, in a, a park, speaking about what it is that's your truth. And it's whether it's your truth or the character that you're portraying, the words that you say connect with them in some kind of special place that lets them feel seen. Our work is to take the experiences and emotions that everybody's feeling right now and create art with it. And so we have an incredible job to do. So it's very important for us to stay focused on there is value to what we do and not turn this into an opportunity to say, what's the point? I mean, do it for minutes at a time. What's the point? Eat the ice cream, curl up in a ball, take a nap. I've done all of this. Highly recommended. I had to switch to vegan ice cream though, because I was getting way too much dairy. Like you can see little breakouts on my face because I was like, oh, ice cream. And I'm like, okay, we need to switch to vegan ice cream immediately. Luckily, we can keep a local business thriving by ordering vegan ice cream from them and they deliver. It's great. So, Ha! Huh, beautiful people, please do not feel that what you are doing has no meaning. Absolutely, there is going to be more need for entertainment than ever at the end of this. And I know that nothing ever goes back to normal, like life is forever changed. Uh, and in many fantastic ways, let's be clear about that. But life will forever 
adjust to what we're experiencing right now. And production is going to come back in a major way because we're going to feel the hole that is production not existing for a few months. And we're going to watch how fast things actually get done. We're going to see things that they used to say, it's going to take two, two, uh, two years to get that movie put together, or it's going to be 18 months before that show is ready to go, or it's going to take months and months and months for the pilot to even go out. And, and so you get told you can't get your footage because of how long the process is going to take. Bullshit. We're going to find out how fast that shit moves. Coming up here soon, it is going to be amazing. I love it. Um, so today I want to talk to you about how to recession-proof your business, economy-proof your business, uh, dip-proof your business. I think this is something that's valuable no matter when you're doing it. I think it's especially valuable right now. But of course, I work with showbiz creatives. I work with actors and artists and storytellers who are always wondering where the next buck is going to come from. So this sort of thing is a topic of conversation always. It is way more a conversation right now. And so that's why I want to make sure that we take a little bit of time today to talk about my five steps for things that you can do to start getting money flowing in to support your creative career now or anytime in the future. So grab your pen, grab your favorite journal, notebook, whatever, grab some water. If you're like me, I've been talking all damn day. Huh, we're definitely going to do some work today. All right. So here are the five steps. And I'm looking over here where I have everything like on a cheat sheet on my screen. Um, we are going to talk through all five of these in brief. And then I would love in the comments if you would share questions that come up as we go through each of these five. If you're like, here's a place where I don't think that works for me. Let's workshop that. Let's let's actually roll up our sleeves and dig in and see. And thank you for sharing this with your friends. I'm seeing the number going up in viewers. So I really appreciate that. You guys are awesome. And thank you, thank you, thank you for uh, getting the word out. Okay. So the first step is take a look at your undervalued superpower. It's your undervalued superpower because it comes easy to you. This is the thing that if somebody wants to take you to lunch and pick your brain, it's about this. It's the thing that fills your texts and your DMs. It's the thing that people come to you for. They take you out to lunch and ask you questions. It's like, this is the thing that conversation always seems to come back to this as something that you are the go-to. You are the one in your friend circle that knows how to do something. And I don't want you to like immediately rush to like, uh, oh, well, who would value that? Because right in the name of number one, I said, your undervalued superpower. The name of this element is what is your undervalued superpower? You undervalue it because it's so easy to you, because it's second nature to you. You believe that no one else could ever find value in it. And so I'm not inviting that part of your brain to the conversation right now. I only want you to think about what is that thing that people come to you again and again and again that you're like, I, it's so simple. I can totally help you with this. Like if it's setting people up on dates and being a fantastic matchmaker, if it's copy, like when you read somebody's bio, you immediately go, oh my God, I have 10 different different, better ways to say this. Um, if it is web design, that's a fantastic one. If it's with all these people staying home right now, if it's ways to entertain kids, if you're the person that at every party, the kids always end up coming around you because you keep them entertained in really interesting ways, that is a superpower and you probably undervalue it. I want you to really consider what your undervalued superpower is. Um, Self-management for actors, in fact undervalued superpower. This was not going to be a book. My first book was Casting Cues, published in 2002. And this was a whole bunch of answers to questions that actors wrote in as I was a columnist at Backstage starting in 1999. And as I interviewed all these casting directors and these interviews ran in the paper every week, actors would write in with questions specifically, okay, this casting director said a demo reel needs to be this long. This other one said it needs to be that long. What's the rule? And I'm like, oh, I'll be a good journalist and go find out what is the rule. And of course, I quickly learned that it depends. It depends on what kind of casting director we're talking about, what kind of project you're going up for. But I started tracking patterns and I started writing about that in the emails that I would send back to people that wrote in to my column with these general questions rather than the specific individual questions of the individual casting directors that I was doing in these interviews every week. And over time, 
anytime I did a really good job answering a question on a message board or in an email, I kept a copy of that answer and put it in a three ring binder. And then I kind of started organizing them like these are questions about agents, managers, public, uh, public, um, pub, bleh, publicists, uh, PR reps, uh, anybody who is on the buying side of things, the casting assistant, the session runner, like who all the people, people are. These are things that are questions about the tools, the demo reel, the headshot, the resume, the website, all of that kind of stuff is over here. And then I had a section that was more advanced things like red carpet training and what to do when you win an Emmy and what kinds of conversations that you need to have with people so that you're always reminding them of where you're headed on brand. All of this just kind of became a collection because I knew if I wanted to answer the same question again, I've already written it the best time here. So I didn't want to have to rewrite every email. So I would reference it here and then rewrite from there. And I would also keep a soft copy in my computer so that I could just copy and paste. And so as I put all of this together in this three ring binder, my husband at the time, my fiance, Keith said, I think this is a book. And I said, it's just answers to the questions that actors have as they read my column. It's, it's not a book. And he said, I think you really need to look at this differently. And I was like, it's all just common sense. And he said, to you, it's common sense. I think to actors, this actually could really unlock a lot for them. And so that's why self-management for actors exists, because that man was smart enough to say, you're undervaluing this superpower you need to turn it into a book. And then here we are, fourth edition, fifth printing for crying out loud. Like this is insane how much a thing this has become. Textbook in colleges and universities all over the world. I mean, what? All from, these are just the ways that I found the patterns in interviewing all these casting directors. And then some trends that I thought we could get out ahead of. So you have an undervalued superpower. It may not turn into the empire that is self-management for actors, but it could. So I just want you to be thinking about undervalued superpowers, and that is number one on the list. Number two, there is a person that you serve. There is a person who always needs this kind of thing. And you may quickly rush to, well, I need to know that it has lots of people that would be interested in it in order for it to be a thing. While that may be true, the, the real work here is to get very narrowly focused on who it is that the thing that I'm great at serves. Because that one person is who you're going to create things for. It's who you're going to write things for. It's who you're going to explain this offering that you're going to create to. Because by making it personal, by having that one person that you write to, that one person that you create for, that one person that you tell the story to, you are making it resonate with many, many, many other people. But if you try to keep it general because you want it to land for as many people as possible, it's too mushy and it can't land with anyone. So this is very, very, very much uh, like when you were studying a character and taking on a persona as a storyteller. You got to get really specific. You got to get into the inner workings of this character and knowing like what they're all about. Uh, Lisa says, yay, Keith, thank you for supporting Bonnie and her superpower, right? Becky, it was so a book. I know. I know. My God. Yes. Who knew? But that, but that's why it's the undervalued superpower. And then the second item. So under undervalued superpower, number one. Number two, who's the person that this serves? Who Who is the person that benefits from that undervalued superpower? And get as specific as you can. Third item. What is the best way to get my superpower to this person? So you see how everything builds on what came before it. That superpower was number one, the person is number two, and then number three is how do we get that superpower to that person? So this is going to be anything from I need to have a Dropbox where, or a Google Drive where I can point people with a link, or it needs to be something where um, I actually have like a member page on a website where people can log in and have access to the space. Um, depending on how like how you want to deliver your superpower, it could be that you need to be able to connect on Zoom or any of the other platforms that are just all the rage right now. Oh my God, you guys. Okay. Have you been Zoom bombed yet? Have you been Zoom bombed? So we've been doing Zoom for the longest. So not, not new here, but Zoom, new for a lot of people. 
new for a lot of people who don't know how to lock down some of the controls or don't pay for the kind of account where you actually can customize and things like that. I went to a comedy show, a comedy and variety show on Sunday night via Zoom, of course, and I was so excited because it's a lot of people that I know and support and I'm excited about and a few celebrities, clients, some people that are like, yes, this is like a really cool event. Uh, and then they had like a tip jar so you could spend money to have, to see the show and then they shared it with all the people who were performing. And it was like two hours long and there's 340 something people on the Zoom and they have the kind of Zoom where you could see everybody. So everybody's turning on their camera and some people are like taking their clothes off. Some people are like picking their nose. Like there's just there's a whole bunch of nasty ass people doing things on this Zoom when we're supposed to be just watching this this experience here. But whatever. So I'm like flipping through and looking and going, oh my god, this is amazing. And one of the things that they had not disabled was the share screen button, which means anybody, anybody who is on this broadcast can just hit share screen and take over. So, of course, someone did. And it was someone who had created the username Ben Dover. So, of course, Ben Dover takes over the screen in the middle of someone's comedy and then broadcasts hardcore porn on the screen for all of us. So then there's all these celebrities and the people who were there doing the show. And they're going, ah, yeah, yeah, ah, ah. So, like, I'm going, screen grab, screen grab, screen grab. Because it's all these famous people who are going, ah, ah. And then some of them are like, ooh. Yeah, and it just was hilarious. Because I was like, they have no idea how to get this person off the screen. And, of course, it's a form of terrorism. I'm not crazy about it. But I'm like, y'all you got to know that you have to learn how the platform works. And part of learning how the platform platform works is you don't broadcast out to the world what your Zoom room is going to be without thinking that randos are going to come in and do the things that make you go, really? Are, are you kidding? Because all that energy out there has to go somewhere. These would be the hecklers, whatever. If we were doing this in a comedy club, people would not have spent the $40 to come in to create disruption like that. But when it's on Zoom, no problem. They're happy to do it. So they kept trying to kick them out, but they would go disable screen share and then go to kick out. And before they could hit kick out, the person would share screen again. And so I, I was like, you have to kick them out while the screen is being shared. Like you can't, you can't make this a two-step process. It, it just, it went on forever. It was hilarious. I know. It was so it's so tacky, but at the same time, you know, hilarious. So tacky hilarious. Is that a thing? Anyway. Number three is you have to know what is the easiest way, the least friction filled way for you to deliver your undervalued superpower to the fantastic person who benefits from it. And so it could be something that you send around in an email. It could be a PDF that you put up someplace where they can download. Um, you can do it through a MailChimp account, which is free. There are so many platforms and systems available, which I know can get a little overwhelming. And so part of my work is to help you not get overwhelmed by that. But don't overcomplicate this and decide that the reason you can't get something up and running is because you're overwhelmed by how to get it out there. It's super, super easy. I haven't done number four yet, Paige, so you're, you're fine. We're right on time. We're just at number three right now, which is how to deliver. Cool. Yeah. Oh, well, I'm glad y'all liked the, the Zoom story. Huh? I know. I know. I know. It's so funny. It's so funny. Well, in fact, yes, exactly. We've got people who are here in the comments that are doing exactly that. Um, and I remember this from like the Periscope days in 2015. It's like you would start up your Periscope and then people would be like, open boob, open boob, open boob, open, show feet, show feet, show feet. And I'm like, y'all seriously need a hobby. And then I realized that's, that's their hobby. And I'm, I'm like, do people ever do that? Like this guy who right now in the comments is saying, show, show us your boobs. Like, does anyone ever go, oh, you know what? This is such a great idea. While I'm doing this broadcast about the five ways that artists and creatives and storytellers can get money flowing in and have a recession proof side hustle so that no matter what's going on in their creative lives, they are thriving. I need to stop this conversation to take off my clothes for rando on the internet. Like, does it ever work? Does someone ever actually do that? Because anyway, it's just baffling. Strange times. All right, y'all. So I will repeat the three things. Number one, what is your undervalued superpower? Number two, who benefits from that undervalued superpower? And number three, what is the easiest, lowest friction delivery method of getting your undervalued superpower to the person who most benefits from it? Okay, now number four. We have five things, so we're, we're now past the halfway point. Number four pricing. 
<sighs> pricing gets a little sticky. Thing is, with artists, pricing is always sticky. Pricing is always sticky. Yes, right now especially, but for artists, pricing is always sticky because we have so much fun doing what we love. We have so much fun creating for a living. We have such a blast making art, and we honestly would believe that we should pay someone for letting us get to do this stuff that is so damn fun. And then that becomes a way that the industry can keep us charging less, working for free, begging for roles, all of that nonsense. So anyone who's an artist, anyone who's a creative, anyone who is in the world of storytelling, I'm going to tell you right now, you need to charge more than you think you do because I can guarantee you whatever price you're thinking of, it's too low. That is just always true. Always, always, always true because artists constantly undervalue undercharge, give it away. And hey, I'm, I'm all for giving it away as an ad. I'm all for giving it away as a sample. I'm all about giving it away as a brand builder. Yeah, it'll be great exposure, Elizabeth says at Facebook. Yes, exactly. And I'm like, oh, it's good news. My rent is 3,000 exposures. So thank you. That's fantastic. I'm so glad it pays in exposure. Yeah. You know, it's always going to be exploited. So one of the things that we need to make sure we do when it comes to pricing is that we get real about what is our happy price? What what does it need to cost for what it is that we're putting out in the world? What is the value of it? And not be afraid to state what that value is. And then at times like this, be willing to say, I'm going to make an exception. I'm not actually only charging full price for this. I also am going to do a pay what it's worth to you sliding scale or inaugural pricing where you're able to set a price that works for you, but it still needs to be a fair exchange of value for value. So having the conversation about pricing is something that I bake right in to these five steps, because if you cannot have a conversation about pricing and value from a logistical standpoint, as well as a creative value standpoint, you are going to constantly be chasing your money. You're going to attract the wrong clients. You're going to put out your offer underpriced and attract all the people who undervalue it. Whereas if you just charge the right amount, you would attract the exact right clients who not only value what you're doing, but love to tell friends. And when you attract the people who undervalue because you're undercharging, they keep you the best secret. So in addition to getting underpaid, you're not even getting the benefit of people telling people that you have something fantastic to offer. Okay, so number five. So we've got what's your undervalued superpower? Who benefits from this undervalued superpower? What's the delivery method for getting this undervalued superpower to this person who most benefits from it? So you got to really think of the tech savvy of this person when you're coming up with number three, how to price it. And of course, you can have pricing for now plus pricing for later when things are less weird. We can talk through that a little bit. And then number five is get that out into the world. That means marketing. That means coming up with the promotion, like creating a web page for it, having sales language for it, being able to tell people in an email, I have a thing and I'd like for you to consider it. Go follow this link and see if this feels like a good fit for you. And of course, artists get really twitchy about self-promo. Well, let's, let's clarify. There's the kind of artist that gets twitchy about self-promo because they so don't want to be that guy. And then there's the guy who like enters every room ringing a cowbell wearing a sandwich board going, me, 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 look at me, look at me, look at me, promote, promote, promote. That guy has no clue what's going on and doesn't care what room he's walked into. He wants everybody to see everything that he's got going on always. And because most of us see that guy and go, I don't want to be that guy, we don't promote at all. And the truth of it is, the fact that we recognize there is a line you can cross means we are not going to cross that line. We, we know that we're not going to cross that line because we don't want to become that. So there is a way to promote that is within integrity for what it is that we're offering and the people who are here to receive it and benefit from it. So I'm being told in the chat that we are glitchy town. Boo! You know what? I'm not surprised. Um, I'm hearing about so many people being online right now, obviously doing live streams 
and broadcasting and today is, I mean, at this time is kind of like prime time. Um, so let me, let's see, let me get my team to put a link in the chat at Facebook and YouTube, please, for um, where I have a version of this talk uh, up on a replay page. Oh, YouTube is seamless, says Aaron. Fabulous. Okay, y'all, if you're watching at Facebook, come over to YouTube where the stream is fine. So apparently our connection is good and YouTube is showing no glitchy town, but Facebook is on the struggle bus. Okay, cool. So if you're watching in replay, obviously comments remain open at Facebook and hopefully it's a little less painful to watch in the replay there, but sorry about that. Yeah. Um, I mean, right now that's, it is the time where everyone is learning how to do all the online streaming. That's redundant. Where else would you be streaming online? Um, but it's where, it's where a lot of people are now gathering in ways that they didn't have to before. So yeah. Okay. Good call. Good call. Yes. Thank you, Anna Maria. I appreciate you putting the notes in Facebook and those of you who can come over to YouTube to continue watching. Apparently that has, um, a less glitchy experience. Cool. Awesome. And then, uh, also just so you know, the, uh, there is a replay of a version of this talk that I did a couple of weeks ago at bonniegillespie.com slash replay. So um, that's also a place that you can go and pause it and have me talk through those five steps. And I actually had someone in the hot seat with me when I did this talk a couple of weeks ago as a webinar. And um, that was really fun because we were able to kind of like go through her, um, her business idea and take it through each of the five steps and do some troubleshooting. Okay, good, Kimberly. I'm glad you made the jump over to YouTube so that you're having a clearer broadcast there. Uh, what questions might y'all have about these five things because I would love to make sure that you see how this could work in your life with your business or that thing that you absolutely are certain could not possibly be a business, but I'm about to tell you that it could be. Um, I would love to be able to help you with that. Marissa says, I feel right now if you aren't giving your art for free, people feel you're taking advantage of this terrible situation. Marissa, I don't agree with that. Um, you know, I, I agree that there are certain, certainly people who are opportunists who are taking advantage of every situation always, but those are the same people who are opportunists every time. Artists are sharing our art because this is how we can serve. We are putting on shows and saying, look, instead of like all the celebrities that I just watched do this show on Sunday night. If I had gone to see that show physically in L.A., first of all, I wouldn't have been able to see half those people because it would have been a smaller show because half the people weren't in L.A. And so they were zooming in from all over the world. But so for, for one thing, it would be a smaller show than the one that I got to experience on Sunday. It would have probably cost $75, $85, then plus parking, plus it would have been at a club that had a two-drink minimum, and the drinks are like $12 a piece. So by the time I've you know Ubered over there or done the lift or whatever, like in, in real life, this would have been a few hundred dollars that was spent for me to have this experience. And instead, there was, here's a tip jar. But they were able to get it in front of far more people than they would have been able to pack in the small room at the comedy club. And they were able to involve people in it from all over the world. And every single one of those people got new fans, probably sold tickets to future events, probably sold albums. Uh, there are people who then started downloading their stuff off iTunes or whatever. So the investment in that as a form of advertising, I think is a really good idea. And I'm not saying go around looking for ways that you can just give it away all the time, because remember what I said about item number four, pricing, artists and creatives already are so in the mood to give it away all the time and believe that they have to because it's so much damn fun to do that one of the things that we see happen is you undervalue what you what you really should be charging for what you do. I'm saying if you could just give it a moment of consideration of what is it that I could charge that feels okay with me in heart math for what it is that I do. Uh, that you are creating things that are of value for people. And so I don't believe that there's anything opportunistic about, um, about charging for what it is that you do and the good that you create in the world. But of course, then you have, have a mind for the environment that we're in. The, um, the webinar that I did a couple of weeks ago was about these five items, these five things that you could do to economy proof your business, essentially. 
Um, and at the end of it, I offered a deeper dive on these five, which if y'all would like to join me, you're more than welcome. We are starting up a whole new round for April. I think the first class is tomorrow. Do I have that right? Is the first class tomorrow? <gasps> the first class is tomorrow. The first class, the first live Zoom is tomorrow, the third at 12 p.m. Pacific. So if it's something you would want to join in on, you can go to bonniegillespie.com slash replay, and on that page, you'll see where I have information about joining in with this. I have, here's what this offering actually costs if I were doing this in the real world, real time, everything is normal, which of course is never again. That's not a thing. Uh, here's what this is, That's just so you know where we are. And then here's the average price based on what people are paying because we've had people who joined this course pay anywhere from the high number was $1,111, so angel numbers, all the ones, uh, as far down as $33, also angel numbers. I thought that was so fascinating. I'm like, oh my God, that's so cool. Uh, the course itself would be $800 if we were offering it outright as a first uh, version because inaugural pricing, I always go lower the first time I offer something because I'm like, I don't know if this is a thing. We're going to find out if it's a thing together. Um, and so we have that out there, but also you can get value from just the free information that I'm giving. And if you're the person who's like, yeah, I can take that information that you've given and run with it, go for it. But if you want to go deeper, I'm like, come on over here and you can pay what you want, pay what it's worth to you. But I do turn away people who are like, I only have a dollar. Here's my dollar. Cause I'm like, if you only have a dollar, we got to Maslow this shit. You need to not be spending your dollar on learning how to get an online offering up. You need to spend a dollar on essentials. You you got to really get your priorities in order because it's so important to me that you are clear on where your focus needs to be during such a chaotic time. So what I'm offering is a nice to have. It's not a have to have. And if you've got a lot of have to haves that are like vying for your attention, I want you there. I want you there rather than coming over into our world and going, I could only pay a dollar to do this. And then as we get into the pricing module for JFDI with Bond, which is what this course is called, you then are going to struggle because you struggled to come up with the dollar to pay to come into the course. And so I, I just, I will refuse your business because right now is not the time for that. This is for people who are like, I have an idea. I've always wondered when I could focus my attention on this. I've always suspected that maybe this could be a thing. And I'm going to be able to tell you if it's a thing. And we have seven live Zooms per month, seven live Zooms per month, April, May, and June. If you join now, you are a member through June 30th, which means you have three times seven Zooms, 21 live Zooms, plus all the replays, all the content on all the course pages, including a bonus on creating your content for the entire year. In fact, we've done a spinoff for that called plan a thon with Bon. And that is something that I'll be doing on Saturday where we're going to spend at least three hours doing a deep dive of planning all your content for an entire year. I'm going to walk you through my five by five method, which is super easy and straightforward. And I'm going to handhold you through it if you join in the plan a thon, which is separate. But this is for people who are like, I know that I have a thing and now I have the time to put my energy and focus on this and I'm going to make it happen. And by charging pay what it's worth, I'm letting you decide what the heart math is for you because I can't, I can't decide that for you. I can only tell you what it would be for me. Um, Anna Maria says, as soon as I move to LA, I will join your program. Can't wait to work with you. Anna Maria, awesome. I am looking forward to you making the move to LA as soon as it feels like the time is right. And I'm excited to support you this way until then. And of course, when you're here, we will work in a much more close capacity, right? Because at some point we actually get to physically see each other again and not just virtually. Thank you, Amber. I so appreciate the support and I love your resources. Okay. Let's look, tell me what come, like what issues might block you with all of this. If you're like, I'm not seeing where I can figure out how to deliver this thing that I do. Like if number three of the five is like, uh, uh, let's talk about that. Or if like number five, you're going, I don't know how to talk about this without sounding skeevy. Let's workshop that a little bit. Let's take a little time and do that. Yeah, Amy, the connection in Facebook is a little glitchy town. So come over to my YouTube channel um, uh, for the cleanest broadcast, I'm told. 
Uh, Latrice says, hi, Bonnie. Hi, sweetheart. Thanks for joining me. Just wondering if marketing for a YouTube gaming channel would be the same as anything else, or is it just about putting out as much content as you can for the algorithm? Latrice, the algorithm is always something to consider, but right now you need to go above and beyond the algorithm which means you need to be doing outreach to the people that need to know that this exists because right now people are so hungry for content and people are overwhelmed by how much is out there. So you have to do a little strategic connection with the people who need to know this exists. Have a hashtag that you get out into the world so that people know where they can go to follow not just you, but the other people who are into your gaming channel and your platform. Um, and yes, you can continue to do a lot of that for free because I know that that's what that model bears, but you should always have a tip jar. You should always have a place where people who are getting some relief from the craziness right now, who feel that they would like to throw some money into the kitty for you, you need to have a way for them to do that. A, a Patreon link or just an opportunity for like, the, there was a Venmo address that was given out for this show that I was talking about for Sunday night. And so I Venmoed a certain amount when I knew I was going to show up and then Venmoed more when I was watching and then Venmoed more after they went through the whole um, Zoom bomb of the hardcore porn terrorism. Because I'm like the fact that they handled that so, because of course they handled it hilariously because uh, that's what comedians do. That's what people who create for a living do. I was like, throw them a little more because also I want them to now spend the money to upgrade their Zoom account so that they don't have to do that ever again. <laughs> So yes, yes, of course, make it easy for people to be able to support you because right now the entertainment that you're creating does give someone a break from the bombardment of negativity that might exist in their world. So, so yes, find a way to make that happen. And yes, in addition to dealing with the algorithm that you already know about. Uh, Sandy says, just signed up. I need this now. I'm stuck on my superpower. Sandy, what do you think your undervalued superpower might be? And you may have a ton of them which is great. We've got time to go through all of them, but let's look at what feels like that thing that you most frequently get asked about, or that if you went through your texts or your DMs at Instagram and saw like, oh my God, I'm always answering this kind of question. I never noticed the pattern. I'm always the one when people need to know how to X, Y, Z. Look at that. There it is. Um, see if you can think of something like that. Hey, Carlos, good to see you, sweetheart. Absolutely my pleasure, Latrice. Jess says, I'm eventually moving to LA as well and would love to work with you as well. Currently located in Chicago. Jess, awesome. I love Chicago. I was just there not quite two years ago on one of my book tours. And I love, love, love Chicago so much. Uh, I do a lot of fun things with the Chicago Acting and Film Meetup Group and, of course, the sag After office there. Uh, I love, 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 love Chicago. It's one of my favorite places. Uh, Sandy says, people always tell me I make their ideas better. They bounce their ideas off me and ask me how to up-level them. Okay, that could easily be a service. Because people can come to you with something that they're like, this isn't a thing. And then you're able to go, here's how you're almost there. Let me show you how to cross the finish line with that. So what I would ask is, can we get more specific about ideas? Like what kinds of ideas? Because right now, it, all ideas, that's a lot. Let's get super narrowly specific about like what kinds of ideas that people have. Even if it's true that it's all ideas, you can improve, which I believe. But what, what specifically might it be that people really don't see how easy it is that you just go, oh, that's easy. Again, it's your undervalued superpower. Let's think about that. Uh, Paige, great. Come join us. Uh, go to, let me see if I can put it on the screen. I can. <gasps> there. Oh, I put this in. I'm so glad. Okay, great. If you go to bonniegillespie.com, let's, JFDI, there's a little hyphen between the let's and the JFDI. JFDI stands for just fucking do it. Because right now we have the time. So let's do it. Let, let's, let's just fucking do it. If you're like, yeah, this is something that I, I thought I could probably do. We're, we're going to do it. We're going to do it together. We're gonna do it. You got me. Like I, like I said, I am showing up on Zoom sometimes 10 hours a day. I am here. I got you. I, I got you. We are going to get you through this. We are going to get some stuff figured out. And what a wonderful time to just be hunkered down and working on this stuff. Uh, Sandy says, yeah, usually it's their courses. Oh, the irony. Sandy, yes. But think about that. If you could create a course clarity service. Sandy, think about that. If your superpower is course clarity consulting, I love alliteration. 
if you could do course clarity coaching or what some, something that is you can help someone get clear on their course and that is the offering. Imagine what people who have really great ideas that unfortunately never turn out to be anything because they're so muddy in the way that they talk about them that they could come to you and you would be like the the course clarity the the whisper like the horse whisperer you're the course whisperer right oh my god that would be so cool uh, Jess you need help finding your undervalued superpower okay so Jess go through your DMs go through your texts take a look at play oh, here this is a good question Jess when you are online and go Oh, I can answer that question. Like if you're in a Facebook group and you see somebody posting a question or asking for advice, what are the things that you're like, oh, I got this, roll up sleeves, start answering? Think about that. Oh, good. I'm glad y'all like that. Cool, cool, cool. Yay. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, Kwanye, would this work as well for a one-time project, one-time offer? Yes. Yes. Um, I launched this two and a half weeks ago. I was like, I, I think this might be a thing. Do y'all want to do this with me? And I did the webinar, which is at this page. And um, I had 12 people enroll while we were on the webinar. And I went, oh, okay, I guess this is a thing. So we're going we're gonna to do this. And so we showed up for seven Zooms over the course of two and a half weeks. Not even. Yeah, like, yeah, two, yeah two, two and a half weeks. And did the seven Zooms, took people through the hot seat process. And all these people are members through June 30th. So if you're joining, you'll you'll be in there with them. And so you'll also be able to lean on them for like, okay, here's how I was able to get this part worked out for me. And, and so there's so much, I love our community. I freaking love our community. The support that y'all show one another, it makes me so happy. It makes me, so, especially at times like now, I get emotional. I freaking love you guys so much. And I love how y'all show up for each other and you support each other out on the internet when you can't do it in person. But it's just really beautiful to see right now. And it just, it, it makes me so happy to know that this has all come together through our self-management for actors work all these years. It's just amazing. Um, we've got some people, Kwanye, to answer you. We have some people who have created already a thing that is just a one-off. It's not like an ongoing service. It's just here is a resource that I'm creating out in the world right now. And it's a, you know, $5 download or whatever. Um, and then there are others who are like creating a membership and they're going to do a pilot program or a beta version, inaugural price where they're like, let's see if it's a thing. And then if it gets traction, then when things are less weird, a few months from now, when there's a whole new normal, because it's never going to go back to what it was, but when there's a whole new normal, then they're going to reevaluate. But now they'll have the tools to be able to do this because of the work that we're doing together. Uh, let's see. Good, good, good. Paige says, my undervalued superpower, I can design someone's room on the fly in the moment. Paige, if I hired you to meet with me on Zoom and you showed me like, here's what I would do with this corner over here, or this is what I would do with these frames over here. Like, could you do... Like that kind of interactive, help me make my space prettier, like that kind of thing. Because right now, people are stuck in their homes and they're looking at things in a way that they never looked at them before and just going, this has got to change and they have no idea what to do. And they can't hire somebody to come in and do it. If you could offer that, woo, that would be such an amazing service. And you can even start off with like a free version of here are 10 tips for restructuring your space um, while you're in quarantine, you know? Oh, I love it. love it. Absolutely my pleasure. Carrie says, I've had patients, PT, physical therapy in the home, who consistently tell me I do things differently than other PTs they've had, more holistic and somewhat, somewhat like a life coach. Carrie, I believe that. I totally believe that. I, I believe working with you as a PT comes with some mindset work, um, that your, your PT is not just physical therapy. It's, um, it's personal therapy, but I know we have to be careful using the word therapy when it relates to mental health, because there are obviously certain, certain things that go along with that in terms of certifications and licenses and, and ethics that we, we want to make sure that we're, um, we're in line with. But I wonder if there is, yeah, I wonder if there's a way to, to be like, you know, PT with a side of, um, of kick you, kick you right in the ass where you need it or, you know, or what, or tough love. Cause I know that's a part of your brand as well. Um, that if it's, you know, PT plus life coaching or something like that, cause, um, man, 
I, I just believe that would be so good. And so help because, because what I, and I know this from doing Pilates with a personal trainer that, which started out as PT, cause you know, I was on my own health journey for the past couple of years. And as I gradually left PT and went into to personal training and really doing the Pilates work for moving forward rather than restoring all the things that were broken, um, I realized that we were really giving me a mindset workout while doing this physical stuff. And of course, you know this, that stuff lands differently in our bodies and we get strong in new ways when we are doing the mental and the physical at the same time. It's sort of like the same way for all those years, I would listen to Abraham Hicks while uh, while playing on the Wii Fit. So I'm doing boxing on the Wii Fit or throwing snowballs or whatever the different little things are on my Wii Fit. And listening to Abraham Hicks and that mind-body balance was just like, boom. It's it just amazing, amazing, amazing. Rowena says, I typed earlier, but I think you missed it. Thank you for typing again, Rowena. I definitely uh, don't, have not seen all the comments because I know there are quite a few. So thank you. Uh, the hardest thing for me would be approaching people with what I have to offer. Okay, so Rowena, that's going to be module five, which is marketing, promoting from a non-icky perspective. So here's what I find to be true. When people struggle with marketing or talking about what it is that they do or asking for the sale, it is almost always because they're still undervaluing that superpower and not realizing how much it helps somebody. And so the work is actually less module five and more module one, which is you're really undervaluing that superpower. So you feel like you are bugging people when you tell them about it. Imagine if I felt that way about self-management for actors. Like if Keith had not convinced me that this is a book and if I then didn't write the book and didn't put it out in the world and didn't let our international distributor take it all over the place and make it available and if Amazon didn't put it in the suggested, that that's a perfect way to think about it. If you search something on the internet about acting, you're gonna see self-management for actors. You're gonna see Bonnie Gillespie. You're going to see my enoughness work. You're going to see SMFA. Like that stuff is going to show up because I show up, because I'm out in the world. You're not mad at Amazon for suggesting other books you may like when you're doing a search, are you? And you're not mad at Google when you search out a problem and some of the items listed are solutions that may cost money. You're like, I have a problem and I was searching out a solution and here are some solutions. So Rowena, when you're saying I, I struggle with approaching people with what it is that I do, I would start with, would you feel bad to go up to someone and say, I can help you. You're having a pain that I can help with. You're having a problem that I'm the solution for. And honestly, this is for acting too. Your acting, your craft, your talent, your God-given abilities, the work that you have absolutely put together over the course of your life, your collection of tools for the way that you tell stories is all in service of a solution to a problem that a studio, a network, an independent producer, a writer, a director has. These people have problems. You have the talent that is a solution. You can't feel bad about that. You, you need to offer up, hey, I help this. You have a need that looks like this role. I can play this role. So the same thing with your undervalued superpower, that there is work that you do that helps someone have a better experience in their lives. And that's all you're offering. That's, that's all you're doing is putting that on offer for people. Jess says, really good question. I have to look through group chats and texts. I most definitely get back to you. Yeah, do get back to me. Um, use hashtag uh, JFDI with Vaughn out on the internet. Yeah, I know. It looks like we've lost Facebook altogether at this point. So sorry about it, Zuckerberg, but that's all right. You are selling our information to people that we don't need to sell it to you. And why is this not typing? Yes. Okay, there it is. Finally. Okay, JFDI with Vaughn. I don't know if this, if y'all will be able to see this. Can y'all see that? Looks like it pushed through to all the places. I may be able to post comments. Look at that. Use that hashtag, JFDI with Bon. Uh, bon, just first half of my name, Bonnie. Bon. Um, and use that out in the world and let me support you with this. Like, even if you're not going to do the, the course version with me, like, totally fine. Do the free version of this. These five steps work. 
I can take you through them if you want to come in and join us in JFDI with Vaughn. Uh, we're starting tomorrow with our first live Zoom of April. Uh, let me give you the dates. April the 3rd is Module 1. April 7th, Module 2. April 13th, Module 3. April 15th, Module 4. April 19th, Module 5. On the 23rd, I'm doing my awesome bonus where we create a year of content in like an hour or create the content plan. We don't create the content. We create create the content plan. And then the open Q&A is on April 30th. Look at that. There's your month of April with all that support. Okay, great. Okay, good. Good, good, good. I'm glad that came through. Um, if you want to join us for the, the like workout, the mastermind of this, this is just a pop-up course that did not exist three weeks ago. Seriously. It's something that I went, hmm, I see a need now. Like there are people who are actively getting nervous about their financial situation. And I'm like, well, then let's finally, finally launch that thing that you've been saying, if only I had the time. Now you got the time and my guidance. So come join me in this if you want. But even if you're doing just the free at home version, totally fine. Just give me hashtag JFDI with Bond and I will look at what you're doing and support you out on the internet because that is something that I absolutely love to do. What other questions might y'all have before we close off? Um, the one with get no, Jess, that one would be, um, that's getting gear for, uh, let's see, that's the, the 11, the free 11 day training. Let me put, I'm going to see if I can, I love learning that I can totally write in the chat here. I didn't think that I could. BonnieGillespie.com replay. Go here. BonnieGillespie.com slash replay. Uh, and you will be able to come in and it's pay, pay what it's worth to you. It'll show you what today's average price is. And that changes a few times a day. Um, and you can choose to pay that. That's what most people do. Most people just pick the average price. Some people pay the full price. Some people pay above the full price. Some people pay way below the full price. It's totally fine. I'm not going to turn you away unless you tell me like, I seriously have no money, but I'm going to find a way to do it. I no, I, I will say no to you because that's not what this is for. This is for people who are like, yes, this is what I need to be doing with my time right now. This is a place where I can busy my brain on something that actually is going to benefit me going forward. This is something that I'm going to be able to put my energy and heart into and be present for these sessions and really do the homework so that when all of this craziness is over, I have a little thing humming in the background that's got money coming in for me in ways that right now give me that stability that I don't have otherwise. Oh, thanks, Rebecca. I'm so glad. Thank you, sweetheart. I think Getting Gear is a career changer, too. I love our program. Getting Gear is amazing. If you want to get on the wait list for Getting Gear, you could certainly do that as well. Um, but right now, we're finding that people are like, I can't even think 100 days because every day feels like 100 right now. So, I mean, I get it. Um, what other questions might you have? Okay, good. Rowena, it does, honey. It always comes back to self-worth, to enoughness, to how we value what it is that we do and who we are in the world. 100%. I know. That's the work though, man. You know, that's the work is that if we can get to a place where we understand that the work that we bring forth, the talent that we share with others, that thing that's easy to us, which is why we take it for granted, is something that the world needs. And it actually creates value. It cre I just, again, want you to really envision that person who comes home from the front lines and they are exhausted and they are ragged and they are so over all the news and all the pain and all the things that they're having to go through right now. And as they take everything off and they shower clean and they just let their day wash down the drain and then they turn on TV to consume some entertainment because it feels so damn good for them to get to escape like that. The work that we do matters. The things that we create in the world matter. And that doesn't mean that we become uh, exploitative. It doesn't mean that we run game. It means we put out an offering and we just say, here is an offer. Take it, leave it. Doesn't matter. My enoughness doesn't change regardless. And that part, as you know, Rowena and everyone is an inside job. Enoughness is an inside job. So all we can do is build the muscle for it. And we build the muscle for it in incremental ways. You know you have my support around all of this. I love you all so much. There's a lot going on in the world right now. So please, please, please make sure that you take good care of yourself and your sweet heart. Make sure that you take naps. Make sure that you eat ice cream and vegan ice cream if, like me, you need to not have so much dairy all the time. And, and also continue to do things that keep you active 
mentally, physically, spiritually, emotionally. These are all things that we all need all the time, but we're really getting clear on all of that today. So I love you, beautiful people. I'll circle back around to any comments that were left that I missed and see if I can help y'all out. And if you need me, you know where to find me. Just come on over to bonniegillespie.com and I got you. Love you, beautiful people. Till next time, stay ninja. Bye.